I'd like to introduce you to Liam O'Malley. He's a college kid studying for his A-levels at Burnley College. And to give you the fastest recap ever, over in England, you graduate from high school at 16, then you typically go into an A-level program, which is like a two-year uh, college, and then you go on to university, all right? So he's 17 years old at Burnley College studying for those A-levels, that two-year uh, degree program. And while he was there, he made some snarky tweets on Twitter and for that, his college booted him. Moreover, his tweets were in support of a government plan to deport illegal immigrants to Rwanda for processing asylum applications and resettlement. In cooperation with the Rwandan government, obviously. We're not just going to drop them off. Um, it's very similar, the scheme is, to what well, you may have heard, the Pacific Solution. That's when Australia sent refugees to Papua New Guinea and uh, Nauru. Israel has a very similar scheme. They send their refugees elsewhere for processing and relocation. But in Israel's case, they don't actually say where. There are lots of different people who say that the countries that Israel uses are U Uganda and Rwanda, but I don't know for sure. More importantly, though, this is a kid who's been thrown out of college for political opinions that are actually not particularly far outside the mainstream. In fact, they are mainstream to the degree that they are what the government of the UK at the moment wants. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at these tweets, okay? So, uh, to begin with, he's quoting uh, Dan Bloom, who said, and he's Dan Bloom is qu quoting a refugee, quote, All I asked for is a chance for a life. That's all. A chance to have a life. Unquote. Our kid responds, that life can be had in the beautiful country of Rwanda, which has much nicer weather than the UK. Which is objectively true, as of course do most countries in the world, just gonna say it. But regardless, uh, I don't see anything worthy of kicking him out of college over. Um, let's move on. The next one. This time he's responding to Steve Chalk, who says, quote, 250 years ago we transported people to Australia because they were vulnerable enough to steal bread. Today we've decided to deport others to Rwanda because they are vulnerable enough to seek safety. How we choose to respond to the needs of others is the mark and judge of our humanity." Unquote. And our, our guy responds and says, The people we transported to Australia ended up building a great nation. Maybe that's what Rwanda needs. Okay, so he made a couple of snarky responses on Twitter, which is kind of what Twitter is. That's its only function as far as I'm concerned, let's be honest. I'm not expecting some thorough intellectual discourse to take place over there that changes public policy. But anyway, I digress. At which point do we say that a kid ought to be kicked out of college? Or perhaps more importantly, at which point do the people of academia decide that? And that's important actually as a sort of a different question, because it is the people of this college who decided that he didn't have the right to an education on account of him having a different public policy decision than them on account of him having different political opinions than them. And you have to remember, these are people who believe what they say, which is, if you don't take the path that we tell you to take, i.e., you know, you complete high school, then you go get the two-year degree, the A-levels, and then you go into university. If you don't, you know, follow this path, you're going to wash out and not have a good life. That's what they drill into kids over and over and over again throughout, uh, throughout that process. They tell them, this is, this is required, otherwise your life is going to be horrible. And they, I do believe that they believe this. And then they say, okay, so this kid had different opinions, so he deserves to have the, the life that is, by their definition, lackluster. And so you kind of have to realize just how really evil this is. And there are some people who are going to say something to the effect of, well, that couldn't happen here. But it's actually very similar to the uh, Kyle Rittenhouse case, right? So you have that kid who defended himself from multiple attackers and was successful in doing so. This has been to court. It's been proven. And, you know, it, it, I mean, I don't want to go over the whole Kyle Rittenhouse case again, but it's been shown that he defended himself. That was all he did, did so well and succeeded. And now multiple universities are refusing to give him an education because he successfully defended himself. And sure, you can argue that those Universities are just caving to leftist pressure to the fact they don't want, you know, any riots or protests or drama. But again, if these are people who think that the the higher education, as they would call it, 
is essential, then why would you deprive that of someone for defending himself? Similarly, why would you deprive that from a you know to, to a kid who simply expressed some views online that, that they don't like? And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that I think the utility of uh, college education or university education is increasingly questionable. Uh, it, it certainly depends on what kind of job you want in the future. There are a couple where you you do have to have you know, university experience there, but there are so many kids who are going into the system not even knowing what they want to do, and they're just flooded with different indoctrination programs. And I will say before I wrap this up, this Liam O'Malley kid, there are some people who are stating that this isn't the real reason that he was kicked, but their alternative explanation doesn't really help a lot either. So there's a fellow student who when it was apparently in the same class with him and who hates Liam, because that's the kind of environment this is, you know, and is saying that Liam at some point got kicked out of the college because he said that we should, uh, as a policy, nuke the Middle East. That's, that's a quote. Now, okay, so maybe he did say we should nuke the Middle East. That wouldn't be the first time I've heard people make that argument or turn the Middle East into glass and various different versions of that by making a very uh, economic argument, that kind of thing, or by looking at the amount of terrorism that comes out of the Middle East and that kind of thing. I don't see the justification for saying, okay, so he said this thing that is objectionable, which is not a direct threat to violence to anyone. He's not saying I'm going to go out and start shooting people. None of that. I don't see any justification for saying we should deny this person an education, which is what they're attempting to do. It's evil to say that this person, this young man who's 17 years old, should be denied an education on the basis of something that he said that's just a, it's a political opinion. It's outrageous. And I do think it's a direction that both of our societies are going, and we should all find it um, offensive to use one of their words. It, it's wrong, it really is. And again, the sort of education they offer at these places is pretty lackluster. Um, and calling it an education is a bit generous at times. However, these are people who claim that this is what you need to do in order to have a decent life. To the degree that they believe that is... <laughs> it is the case that to the degree that they believe that, it is evil for them to then say, and we're going to deny you the rest of your life because you said something we didn't like. This shouldn't happen, and there should be outrage on cases like this. Wow, you made it to the end. You have an attention span that's outside of the modern world, but I have more videos, and also, if you like them that much, there are ways to support the channel in the links below. Thanks.